Hey, this is Am Kantek back with another video. This time I'm gonna be talking a little about Home Assistant. I have some Tuya Smart Outlet plugs. I was using the IFTT integration. You'll see I have another video talking about that. But now they recently introduced this paid plan and you only get three tasks in the free plan, which is not worth it for most people. So I found out this program called Home Assistant and you need a VM or um, Raspberry Pi, for example. So I have a laptop running Ubuntu and through their integration, I'm not going to show you exactly just because it's pretty much on their website and it's been covered in other YouTube videos. You download the VMDK and you install VirtualBox from the Ubuntu software store. It's completely free. And then you'll set it up. And I got it running in no time. And it's running in headless mode, which means there's no UI. You'll need to go to the router's configuration page and get the IP address of the device. And then you run it at port 8123. And now I'm on my actual computer. You could either type an IP address of the computer running Home Assistant with the port 8123, or you could just write homeassistant.local port 8123. And then for the first time, it'll let you set it up, add a username and password, and then it'll already scan the network and see the configurations. Depending on the amount of devices and what you have, it could be different. This is already my panel that's set up, but by default, it'll already set up one with integrations. Whatever's not there, you could go to configuration, integrations, and then add. Uh, I shut off Almond because that doesn't really work. Apple TV, you could enable. Brother, you could enable. Local IP address, you could enable. Some of them are by default. Mobile app. You could sign in on your Android or iPhone, and then it will also add more opportunities to integrate, let's say showing battery power location of devices, etc. And here you could see other devices that we have. Xbox works basically if you have Xbox Live, if you're online or not. There are other settings that you could do with the Xbox, but you need to enable remote access on the Xbox itself. Also kind of work like the smart screen that Xbox had built in. Depending on how you enable it, you go to the supervisor. This will only work, I believe, if you have the headless mode, and then you could add. Uh, it comes with official add-ons by default. You go to repositories, and then you could add a third-party one. This one's quite popular, add-ons.community. And there's a bunch of them. I You really don't need them for the most basic usage, but it doesn't hurt to have. You go to snapshots and then save um, save a backup of the Home Assistant system. If you lose it, if you want to switch computers, etc., it'll save them all. I'd recommend password protecting it because sometimes you need to enter credentials for other services and it's best to play it safe. There's a bunch of logs for the computer itself. Uh, even if you're not really into it, you don't need to go in and discover all the settings and by default, you'll already have some great integrations and it'll help a lot. And then there's always added things. If you could code, if you want to integrate more devices, it'll also import the, if you have Tuya or smart life, it'll import the scenes as well as the devices. So that just saves you one more, uh, one more hassle, I'd like to say. And if you guys are interested, I will do some more videos covering how to use it. The with one of the Apple TV one is quite limited. You can't actually shut it off or turn it on because that's that hasn't been integrated yet. But you could do text to speech. It doesn't really help so much unless you want to add it to one of your tasks. You go to like Hello World. 
And then it'll open the video. It'll also be good for trolling your family if you want to do it. Right now that Apple TV is off, so you won't even see that. And that's basically a short overview of what it does. It's not like Tezmodo in the sense that you don't need to flash any of your devices or have specific hardware. And this is not destructive in any sense, meaning that you could just uninstall it, shut off the server, and then your devices will still work as normal, albeit without any of the integrations. Another benefit is that this is open source, meaning that you could go in, pay someone or do it yourself and add in something, customize a setting, contribute to the code, and more people could benefit from it. Uh, right now I'm considering adding something of my own. So leave uh, suggestions in the comments and I'll take a look at it. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe to show this video to more people and let us help more people out and skip IFTT and move over to Home Assistant.